So how can we help family caregivers through this process? Um, in this event of COVID, in the post-COVID stage, most patients require the assistance of a family caregiver when they are transitioning to home. And caregiving without COVID, um, assuming the role of a family caregiver without COVID, is very challenging. And um, so during this post-COVID experience, family caregivers have even more stress and strain than they do under usual circumstances. So I have some suggestions that are evidence-based to help family caregivers to um, cope and adjust and adapt to the um, caring for someone post-COVID. So some important things, one is identify and designate vaccinated people who will be able to help the patient upon the return home. And as Mary Ellen said, this is a complex situation. There's a lot of different information that people get from the media on whether they should be vaccinated, on whether they should wear masks. And really um, the recommendation is that people are vaccinated. And as nurses, certainly we want to advocate for that. So for the acute care nurses, really early on in the stay to identify who in that support system will be helping the patient post COVID and encourage them early on to get that vaccine, even if they can get the first vaccine before they go into um, be part of that family unit would be beneficial. And then that will give the, the, the family unit reassurance that people can be together and they can work together to come together as a family unit to help the person in that transition home, which is a very challenging situation. Something else we can do is assess the caregiver for their preparedness for the caregiver role. And I'll share some information about, about that with you a little bit later. You can also share resources. Many people are unaware of the financial resources that are available for family caregivers. We do have, as a result of, the, of COVID, the U.S. Department of Labor Family First Corona Response Act, that's called FFCRA. And fortunately, this has been extended several times and is still current. It provides small and medium-sized employers employers who have less than 500 employees with tax credits to provide paid leave for employees for COVID related reasons. And this is very significant because as Mary Ellen said, sometimes this recovery process can take months into um, the future. So it's important to have that financial support so you don't have the additional strain of the economic burden of COVID. And also, Family Medical Leave Act, also known as FMLA, is also available in other states. Many states have additional state administered family leave. So it's important um, to be aware of those resources and to educate patients and their family members about these resources um, when needed and to engage a social worker to assist you in that. Mary Ellen talked about the training that's required to manage the clinical care. And it's very complex, multiple systems are involved. And so caregiver training is very important to do right and to do well, because there is so much care activities that must be provided. And many times the person who's helping the patient at home hasn't had any experience with being a caregiver or dealing with these complex medical situations. So it's very important that we assist caregivers in, by training them well in ways that are effective. And so I'm gonna go over some of those strategies with you. Um, this is some information on a report that was released um, in 2020 called Home Alone Revisited in Family Caregivers Providing Complex Care. And in this report, which was based on information pre-COVID, though the, certainly more, more profound since COVID, that we as health systems need to do more to prepare these vital members of the team. They're talking about the family caregivers to understand 
the care that they're giving. Because what we're expecting people to do after patients are discharged is very involved. And we really need to help them to be able to competently um, perform that care and do so with assurance. So this is um, some research that's been published that shows that we clinicians underestimate the needs of the patient, the resident, or the caregiver for information. However, we overestimate their ability to communicate effectively with patients and caregivers and residents. So basically, we think we're doing a good job at providing not enough information to people. And so it's no surprise that about 40 to 88% of medical information that we provide to our patients and their family members is immediately forgotten. And of the remaining information that the patient and caregiver have, about 50% of that is incorrect. So we have a long way to go with improving the way that we provide education to our patients and our family members. So there is an effective mechanism, method, of helping to improve how people learn from what we teach them. And teach back is one of those methods. It's an evidence-based approach to improving patient-provider communication and patient health outcomes by ensuring understanding. And there is a foundation of evidence behind this teach back method. It's a way to make sure that you, the healthcare provider, explain the information clearly. Asking the person, to explain in their own words what they need to know or do, and to do so in a caring way. And part of the method is to check for understanding and if needed, repeat again and also check again. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality has a toolkit and that website's listed there for your reference. And here they point out and they provide the evidence that TeachBack improves patient understanding and adherence to the treatment plan. It decreases callbacks and canceled appointments, and it improves the patient, resident, or caregiver satisfaction and outcomes. And so why would we not want to do that? So I'm gonna give you an example of the TeachBack method. So the first step is to explain, and the second step is to assess then get clarification from the person you're teaching to validate that they're understanding. So I'm gonna do a little demonstration with you. So Mary Ellen, this is a medication that you're gonna start taking. This medication is to help you with nausea. I understand you have nausea as a result of your COVID sequelae. This is called Zofran and it's to be taken twice a day around the clock while you're, while you're in this period of having nausea. If you have any problems with this medication, I wanna make sure that you contact your doctor and let them know what's going on. And if your nausea stops, you may stop taking this medication. So um, Mary Ellen, I'm gonna ask you to explain in your own words what I just described. And I'm gonna give you this bottle so that you have something to read from and you have a source of information to help you remember, okay? So Mary Ellen reads it back to me, and then I clarify, yes, that's correct. And you wanna make sure that um, you check in with your doctor if you have any other gastro and any other problems with your stomach or with your nausea, that you check in with your doctor on that. And that way, Mary Ellen is actually telling me back what I just told her in her own words, and um, one of the important things about Teach Back is if Mary Ellen doesn't get it right, that's not Mary Ellen's fault. It's my fault that as a teacher, I was not effective in teaching her. And so um, that's my role as a nurse is to, in a, in a caring, compassionate, supportive way, um, let her know that this is, that I, I own the fact that I need to be more clear with what I'm teaching her. You also wanna make sure, of course, that health literacy needs are addressed and that any written materials that are provided are provided in the person's 
spoken and written language, and if language services interpreters are necessary, that those are also um, provided. So next, um, I'm going to do, give you a little bit more about Teach Back. Um, and some phrase that's good to start with is I want to make sure I explain things clearly. Um, as I said, use a caring tone of voice and attitude, display comfortable body language and make eye contact. Use plain language, do not use medical jargon. Ask the patient to explain back using their own words. Use non-shaming open-ended questions and avoid asking questions that can be answered with simple yes, no. So use those open-ended questions. And I catch myself all the time doing this, asking yes, no questions. It's always good to just remind yourself, open-ended questions give you much more rich information. Emphasize the responsibility to explain clearly is on you, the provider. And if the patient is not able to teach back correctly, explain again and recheck and use reader-friendly print materials to support learning. And I'm gonna talk about that next. And then of course, document the use of the patient response to the teach back.